Hi guys, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and today we are starting a brand new section. Um, a section is kind of like a chapter, so this is kind of like starting chapter 7. It's section 7, the quantum mechanical view of the atom and periodicity. So this section is uh, sometimes it's a little daunting at first because we do talk about the four quantum numbers and we do talk about assigning electron configurations and all that. But if we just take it step by step, one video at a time, hopefully it'll all make sense. So I'm gonna try my best just to stay focused on the notes on the page and try not to get ahead of myself so that the notes and then this course, section seven, kind of flows and is easy to understand. So let's get started. Page one of our notes. Section 7, the quantum mechanical view of the atom and periodicity. So some background here before we get going. Because of Dalton's atomic theory, we came to believe in something called atoms. Since then, we've begun asking questions about an atom's structure and about an atom's periodicity. And we'll talk more about this as we get further along in Section 7. So, however, before we can address the nature of the atom, we must first discuss some similar properties of light. Once we understand these properties of light, we can then translate them into atoms and see how atoms behave this way also. So, we first need to discuss some similar properties of light. So today we're gonna to talk about light. Now light, is also called electromagnetic radiation, EMR. So electromagnetic radiation, EMR. A few bullet points or a few notes on electromagnetic radiation. Energy in the form of light travels through space by electromagnetic radiation, okay? So energy in the form of light travels through space by electromagnetic radiation. Now we're going to elaborate on the next page on what it really means to, to be light. It's not just visible light. There's a whole bunch of different types of radiation that kind of classify into electromagnetic radiation. In fact, there are seven types. Bottom of our notes, there are seven types of EMR and we're going to put them into a little spectrum right now. So, the sketch I'm about to draw is a sketch, and you can find a nice pretty looking one in your textbook or online, but I'm going to go ahead and sketch it out, and the, watching me in the process of sketching this out will help you slowly understand or build an understanding of the electromagnetic spectrum. So I'm drawing the spectrum right here. This is my electromagnetic spectrum. On the left hand side, I've decided to make that my high energy side. On the right hand side is my low energy side. Now, high energy corresponds to high frequency, short wavelength. On the right hand side, low energy corresponds to low frequency and long wavelength. We'll learn about the mathematical relationship between energy, frequency, and wavelength in the next few pages. Well, in the, in the middle left of my electromagnetic spectrum is visible light. Visible light are the colors that we see. So I have go ahead and I've taken that sliver and broken it up so that we can see a little bit better how visible light is broken down. So we got violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And they take up little 50 nanometer increments. So violet light is 400 to 450 nanometers. And then if you look at the far right, the red one, is 700 to 750 nanometers. So I've just taken that sliver and kind of blown it out. So on the far left, high energy, really dangerous for us, are gamma rays. Gamma rays are found up in the atmosphere, or actually beyond our atmosphere in the ionosphere, stuff like that. Then we have x-rays, right? We wear those little jackets when we go to the dentist because x-rays are harmful. Uh, ultraviolet rays, those are what cause sunburns. So ultraviolet rays are right next to violet in the visible light. Scroll down to the other end of the visible light and you have red light, 
which is next to infrared, which is next to microwaves, which is next to radio waves. Then we got FM, shortwave, AM. So to the right of the visible light sliver, this is all very kind of harmless energy, I guess I can say loosely. It's low energy stuff. Now, a few notes on the electromagnetic spectrum. Light, EMR, only differs in its energy, frequency, and wavelength. So visible light is only different from microwaves in its energy, frequency, and wavelength. And then, of course, visible light only makes up a tiny sliver of the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? So it's crazy. Gamma rays, radio waves, orange light are only different in their energy, frequency, and wavelength. So, regarding that, soon we will see the mathematical relationships between energy, wavelength, and frequency. Energy is given the symbol capital E, wavelength has a little wishbone, okay? And frequency has a little kind of Greek symbol V, which is the Greek symbol nu. Wavelength, of course, is the Greek symbol lambda. But before I get into that mathematical relationship between E, energy, wavelength, wishbone, if you will, and frequency, uh, nu, I want to talk about complementary colors. So to remember complementary colors for visible light, I use and sand out the phrase viboger. It just reminds me of like picking a booger. It just, it's easy to remem remember. Viboger. So viboger. The V and the Y are together, the B and the O are together, and the G and the R are together. Viboger. If violet light's absorbed, the object's going to appear yellow. If yellow light's absorbed, the object will, will appear violet. Okay? Same thing with blue and orange. Same thing with green and red. And I just I drop or, or ignore indigo just for simplicity reasons. All right. Let's talk now about how light travels and by light i'm talking about microwaves i'm talking about gamma rays i'm talking about all of it light emr travels as a wave okay well how exactly does this wave look well i'm going to draw kind of two examples in one here so give me some time while i sketch this out i'm going to have an example above and i'm going to have an example below now the example above you'll see i'm doing one two three cycles are hitting the right hand side per second now you see the right hand side dashed line think of that like a dock like a dock on a bay or a pier in the water and these are actual waves hitting the pier or hitting the dock on the first example up there you see one wavelength is the distance between two consecutive waves the distance between two peaks it could also be the distance between two troughs at the bottom and the frequency, if you just count the humps, one, two, three, boom. Three cycles is, are happening every second um, that I hit this dock. So every second I hit the dock, or I hit that right-hand side three times. Now the bottom example, look at the waves. The waves are happening much more often. In fact, twice as often. One, two, three, four, five. Six waves are hitting that right-hand dotted line, which we're calling a dock on a bay or a pier in the water. Six cycles are hitting that every second. So the frequency for my top wave, frequency, which is the number of cycles per second traveling past a fixed point. Fixed point, in my example, is like the pier out in the water or a dock on a bay. And these waves are hitting twice as often on the bottom one. So the frequency for my top one is three cycles per second. And we'll learn in a second that three cycles per second is also known as three hertz. And the wavelength on my bottom example is half as much as the wavelength in my top example, which is why my frequency is twice as much. So you can definitely see the wavelength relationship with frequency is an inverse relationship. The longer the wavelength, right? the shorter the, the frequency. In fact, we can have another relationship between frequency and wavelength that I have boxed up here. And it's the wavelength of light times the frequency, little v, little Greek symbol nu, of light 
equals C. Now C is a constant. You always know C, you don't have to worry about it. C is the speed of light. It's 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. All right, wavelength is in meters. Remember it's a length, right? It's a distance. So my little Greek symbol lambda is wavelength M, my little wishbone. And frequency is in seconds to the minus one or hertz. In other words, one cycle per second is equal one over a second. We kind of drop the cycle. One cycle per second equals one over second, which is second to the minus one, which is a hertz. So frequency is a second to the minus one, a cycle per second or a hertz. All right, best way to learn this, uh, wavelength times frequency equals C equation at the top of the page of the notes is to do an example. Calculate the frequency of red light having a wavelength of 6.50 times 10 to the second nanometers. Well, 6.50 times 10 to the second nanometers, we convert that to meters. You have to be in meters. And it's 10 to the ninth nanometers for every meter. It gives me 6.50 times 10 to the minus seventh. We rearrange and we get 4.61 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now, how did I get that answer? Well, I just started with my equation and number two is wavelength times frequency equals C. So it's wavelength V or wavelength nu equals C. And then I rearrange and I get nu, Greek symbol nu is that little cursive V equals C over the wavelength. I plug in my C constant, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, divide by 6.50 times 10 to the minus seventh meters. You'll notice how the units cancel. I'm left in 4.61 times 10 to the 14th seconds to minus one, or 4.61 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, make sure to watch the next video. It follows suit and continues on with what we're talking about here in the early stages of section seven. And uh, you can find all my chemistry notes and all my organic chemistry notes at chemistrynotes.com. All right, so I'll see you next time. Thanks.